Um, yeah, so I was thinking about reviewing uh, games that I recently found when I was moving. I found my old scorebook from uh, like years ago. Like I haven't seen these games in uh, in years. Can you guys see that? It won't focus. It won't focus. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I thought it'd be cool to review some of these games. I mean, this is when I was like probably pretty low rated, like maybe. I don't even know. It could be like 1200, 1300 rated Costia. And I think it's a lot of games. I have this whole thing, which actually not a t only a few games in here, actually. Maybe not that many. But then I have a bunch of old score sheets that I haven't reviewed uh, in a while either. Uh, and, and it's actually something I've been meaning to do for a while because I don't have these games in my database. Um. No, not, not, not even 2000 level, not even 2000, <laughs> no, this is, I have all my games from when I was at least, um, from when I was around 2000 and higher, I have all those games, like all my tournament games. So in chess space, I have like 1100 tournament games and a lot of them are annotated, not all of them, but a lot of them are like, not annotated, but like analyzed, you know, so I went through them. Uh, not all of them, because sometimes you like you transfer games and you, you lose stuff, but um, these games I, ha I haven't had. I, I thought they were gone, actually. I just thought, like, okay, I played, like, a thousand games when I was a child. You know, I blundered some pieces, whatever. <laughs> Those games are, are in history now. Uh, but no, no, we have them, and we're about to enter them in, into history. Uh, time control for these games, um, I would imagine a lot of it was like G30. That's what I used to play over the board. That was the common uh, time control for like kid tournaments. But then once I started playing like regular events, it was like the regular 40 moves in two hours, super long time control. It always it was so funny to me how they would just you just go from playing G30 to <laughs> 40 and two. Um, but yeah. So here we go. Here's this first game. Now I think the fun thing about this is going to be that I doubt all of the information on the score sheet is going to be accurate, right? Because I wasn't like the neatest kid. Um, so we're going to have to do some detective work, I'm imagining. Like I imagine there's going to be some, some illegal moves uh, written down. Um, but that's fine. Let's edit the names. So I'm playing black here against a player named Dina Connie. Okay, and this is from the ACC all no ACC America Cup. So the ACC I think it was this like chess federation in, in Southern California. Um, and now the date for this game is November 18. And then I kid you not guys, it just says 200. 11, 18, 200. So I don't know if it was 2000, 2001, 2002. I'm gonna open up my like, my tournament history. Um, but I don't really see the tournament. <laughs> so, so I don't know where this game was played. I, I imagine it was somewhere in the year 200 and up. Now, I played a tournament in 1999, according to my um, US chess profile, called the All-America Cup, which seems to have a similar title, but that was 1999. And that was, but that the thing is, that was also like exactly, like the dates match up, like the date of the game is 11-18, and the date the, rate was uh, the tournament was rated is November 21, like three days later. But it's 1999, why would I write 200? Is it possible that I wrote 200, realized it's not the year 2000 yet, and then just didn't change it? I don't understand. <laughs> but also, I checked this turn. Well, let me check. Let me see if there, if I even played a Dina Kani. No, there's no Dina Kani in this tournament. So, whenever this game was played, it was not. It was not in 1999. Okay, so yeah, there's another tournament here. 
that I played in like November. I'm just looking at all my November tournaments in the year 2000 and up. And there's no Dina here either. So I don't know when this game was played, guys. It's just like a mystery to be honest. I have no idea. Is it possible that some, some tournaments didn't go into US chess? Let's go to the game. Let's see if I even remember my repertoire. I'm pretty sure I was playing like Queen's Gambit Declined, which is like D5, E6. And then with black, uh, probably like E4, E5. And then with white, I'm pretty sure I was playing E4 up until I was like, um, maybe, maybe like 1800 or so. Actually, I think I, I think the first tournament where I started recording my games, like in chess space, is the first tournament where I started playing D4. So I, starting with like all my D4 games, that's what I have in chess space. So I don't have any of my old um, E4 games, as far as I remember. Okay, well let's uh, let's let's put in this game. So I'm playing black in this one. D4, knight of six, knight of three, e6. Oh, okay. So I was playing more of a nimzo. Knight c3, d5. Nice. I'm glad I knew what I was doing here. You got to play d5. You don't let white play e4. This might be instructive for you guys. I mean, I, I imagine I was at a similar level. Um, to some of you folks in the chat. So this is like me analyzing <laughs> one of your games. Um, bishop f4. Okay, now it says bishop b5. I'm going to assume that means bishop b4. Uh, as a coach, I've developed uh, a good sense because I've had to go through a lot of score sheets <laughs> that were wrong. And a lot of times you have to like piece together like, okay, there was an illegal move played. So let's back up. Let's see what, what pair of moves might have been logically missed that uh that could lead us to this position all right now white goes queen d2 and bam i hit them with knight e4 wow good job young kostia huh look at this guy's a3 knight takes d2 this is gg wow round one huh look at this takes 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 castles e3 knight d7 that's it, guys. That's how easy chess was back then. That's it. You found one good move in the opening. It was GG. Can you guys imagine? Okay, 94 takes rook b1, c5. I'm beginning to feel my opponent maybe wasn't the most experienced player looking at this game. But look at me, I'm everything I'm doing makes sense. I'm just happy with my play. I feel like this is very, very straightforward play. Okay, now rook b3 looks like, knight f3 check. King g2, queen c6. Okay, looks like I'm playing for some kind of checkmate. All right, that's fine. <laughs> I'm like, that's not good technique. No, that's fine. Um, Lost my place. Rook d1, e3, f e knight d2 check, king f2, I took the rook, give me that. King goes to e1, rook a d8. Rook b1 takes king f2, knight d2. Yeah, I was such a vacuum cleaner just trying to take everything. Rook c1, rook f e8, there we go, using the last piece, h3. Rook d6. <laughs> Look at this one. Rook d6. Wow. What a trickster. Unbelievable. Look at this. No idea. I mean, maybe maybe I'm trying to like go here or something or like double, but like rook d6 takes, takes. And that's going to be a GG. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh no, my rook. Yeah, this is my... <laughs> This is my original. Oh no, my rook. That's hilarious. No, I don't know what I don't know what my rating was at this point. I can tell you guys though, around the year 2000. So at the turn of the century, like 1999 to 2000, I was rated 959. Like, basically, that was my first tournament in 2000. That was my my new rating, 959. Uh, so I only broke a thousand in April or no March. March of 2000 is when I broke 1,000. And then I kind of like just hovered around a thousand, a thousand sixty for a couple months. Oh, and then apparently 
I don't, I don't remember any of this. Apparently, I had a big breakthrough in uh, December of the year 2000, the National K-12 Grade Championship, Florida, where I gained 127 points. I went from 1068 to 1185, and then, oh, this is weird. Then I had another, then I had a tournament in November. I guess this one was, was rated later for whatever reason. But in the second tournament, I went from 1185 to 1316. So in two tournaments, I went from 1068 to 1316, USCF rating, which is kind of a lot when you've been hovering for like, you know, 1000 to 1060 for, for a couple months. Like, like I had some good tournaments, then I like lost like 40 points. But that's exactly what I was talking about. That's what a lot of coaches talking about. Like, a lot of times you could be working and playing a lot and like getting better, but the rating doesn't really catch up. And then you just have one or two good tournaments and all of a sudden it's like 300 points. Um, wait, can I show the rating graph? There's not really a graph. It's more of a, it's more of a list. It's not very exciting. I, I can put it up. Yeah, this is what the USCF website looks like. This is where you see all your old events you can click on. And then it, you know, if you want to see like the standings and then it shows you the rating. So th these were the events I was talking about. See, there's this, for some reason, this event <laughs> was in December graded before this event, uh, which was in November or rated, I should say. I don't know. I bet no one's ever streamed with like this page before, even though this is a page that like <laughs> literally every US chess tournament player has like spent hours <laughs> looking through. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know when this game was played. It was somewhere around 2000. So this is the tournament I was talking about earlier. It's 1999 All-America Cup. But I didn't play Adina Kani in that tournament. So I don't know. I don't know when this game happened. No one knows. But anyway, let me save this game because um, I want to fill up. I want these games. These are valuable games. You know, I could sell these games as like NFTs. Let me let me guys know how much you would bid for one of Young Kostya's games. I would like to know. Next game, okay, is me again. I wrote, back then I wrote my name as Constantine. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so I was still writing Constantine back then. No info, no info about any anything. This is what I often see my student score sheets too. Just like, just names and then nothing. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but basically nothing. No info about the game. I played someone named Benjamin. Probably his first name, probably not Joel Benjamin. His name was Benjamin. That's all I know about my opponent. <laughs> Could be Benjamin Feingold. I mean, I doubt it. You know, I don't think we were playing in the same sections uh, back then, but okay. So let's see, this game went D4, Knight of six. So it looks like, yeah, I was kind of Nimzo player. Knight C3, a lot of players did this back then. They tried to pull this stuff. Even back then they tried to pull this kind of thing, right? Trying to go E4. D5, I shut it down. Knight of three, e6, 83. See, this guy knows. This guy knows the danger. This guy knows. Okay, bishop e7. So I'm like, all right, cool, bro, cool. Bishop f4. Castles, e3. It says knight d7, probably this knight. Bishop d3, b6. Look at this, guys. I mean, I knew my classics, you know? This is like a very, a very reasonable classic setup. White castle first. Bishop b7, h3, c5. Rook e1, c4. Bishop e2, rook e8. So kind of a closed position. I'm not sure if today if I would make this move c4. It kind of makes sense because it shuts down white's bishop and then it makes it hard for white to play um, e4. Uh, so that may be actually a reasonable idea. I feel like a natural follow-up though would be a6 though. So I could play like b5 and get the queenside pawn storm going. Like if you're gonna do this, then yeah, like go full hog, play a6, b5 and queen b6, a5. Yeah, try to get these pawns going. Okay, rook e8, maybe playing for like e5 at some point. Maybe, maybe I wanna do this. This would be my guess. I always like these knight maneuvers. Well, bishop would just stay here. Yeah, just defending, maybe one day supporting because it's not like white's bishop is that great either, right? It doesn't exactly have a lot of targets. So both bishops are very, very restricted. So b3. And now I played cb, cb, rook c8. So this is, yeah, another reason why maybe a6 would have been better. Because if b3, then I could just play b5 here. 
And then if takes, then probably we go DC because we still control these squares. We don't let white push. And then I could get like knight b6, knight d5. Like this, I think looks pretty good for black. Okay, so I wasn't subtle enough to understand a6 back then. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> so far, we're not doing anything criminal. Knight b1. I play bishop f8. Bishop d3. a6, bishop c2, b5. Very measured, huh? Very measured play. Queen d3, knight e4. Knight d2, rook c3. And that's it, game over. Got the piece. Nice job. Hopefully I won this game. Okay, rook e d1. Queen c8. Knight e1. And now I trade. Rook takes, knight takes. Queen takes and knight f6, the second knight uses the e4 square. Man, these games are instructive, guys. Gotta say, f3, I drop back. Bishop e5. Knight d7, f4. I just take fe, queen d8. Okay, going for some dark squares. Knight c2, f6. Wow, my first f6 pawn break. Because I would later go on to play the French, but I wasn't playing the French back at this point. I was definitely playing e4, e5, at least as far as I remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, th this was a nice nice little pawn break. Rook f1, f5, rook f4, bishop e7, rook f3, bishop h4, queen e2, queen c7. Okay, the game ended here. Not sure what happened, but yeah, we're a piece up. So I am gonna assume that we won this one. <laughs> Hmm. Didn't I have knight c3 after rook d1? Let's check it out. Yeah. But then here, right? So this, I feel like we're losing the piece. I don't like that. I think at this point, I mean, we, we won the piece. So I, I was just trying to play like... Just trying to play solid. Trade everything off. And just keep the piece. Yeah, f6 here. That's a good point. Oh, queen c8 at the end? Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to find that. No. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I find queen c8 here. At this, at this level? No, no way. <laughs> I mean, maybe I would find it. Like, maybe I play knight c3. White goes queen d3, and I'm like, oh, oops. And then I'm thinking, okay, do I, should I give like, should I give the exchange? And then maybe, maybe I would see it, maybe, but not like from afar. No. <laughs> okay, so GG, GG Benjamin. Okay, next game. Next game doesn't even have a name. <laughs> I don't know if it's my game, if it's my brother's game. Uh, who played this game? It's a total mystery. I assume I was playing white because it was uh, Scandinavian. It was e4, d5. And uh, I've never played Scandinavian in my life. It was probably my game. Okay, we'll say Kostya NN. Okay, so Scandi takes, takes, knight c3, queen a5, knight f3, knight f6, d4, bishop f5, Bishop d2, c6, bishop e2. This is pretty passive. I don't know why <laughs> not putting the bishop on c4. Okay, queen d8. Black got a little scared. Castles, e6, bishop f4, bishop d6. Uh, takes, takes, rook e1, bishop e4, knight e5. I gotta say, I mean, from, from the very beginning, it looks like I learned how to like kind of just play in the center. Just put all my pieces here, not really make like a lot of unnecessary moves. Just kind of straightforward chess. Um, like good habits chess. Like I feel like I'm following very good habits chess, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, the time control was probably like G30, I imagine, for 
most of my uh, scholastic games. Probably G30, maybe G60, but I wouldn't be, I probably wouldn't have used the full 60. <laughs> that wasn't really a thing. But yeah, knight d7 takes, knight takes, uh-oh, knight takes e4, there we go, queen d5, bishop f3, that's a piece. So knight takes d7, black forgot about their bishop. Should have just taken with the queen and then position is like relatively equal. Okay, so let's get back to the game. Bishop f3, queen a5. I give a check, nice job, king e7. I just go back. Hey, look at this, guys. This was a... Uh... I joined the club. Do you guys remember from uh, Under the Surface? Anyone in the book club? What was this chapter called? There's a chapter about, um, you know, disappearing moves. That's very exciting. I joined the club at a really early age. <laughs> Walking without moving. Yeah, if you guys are reading Under the Surface. Walking without moving. Progress without change. Chapter 15, it's all about like making moves for your opponent without changing your own position. <laughs> so we just give check, king e7. We drop back and now black can't castle. We've kept our position steady. He talks about like the secret club, about how not everyone has done this kind of move. Well, I joined the club. I am now a member. <laughs> Okay, so rook e8, queen d2. Trade queens, like a good Russian schoolboy, we're up the piece, we just trade queens, prove our position. Look at this, guys, I made like two pawn moves in this game. <laughs> f5, rook h4, knight f6, bishop e2, rook ad8, c3, c5, Knight b3 takes, knight takes, g5, okay, rook gets a little funky, rook h3, g4, but it's fine, rook d3, king f7, saw the threat, rook e1, e5, you just take that, right, yeah, take, nice, take, take, guys, super clean, like, this game would be like 99% accuracy, maybe we can run it, I don't know if there's a way to run it through the chess stock cover board. I feel like this game would be super clean. Look at this, knight g7 takes. Beautiful. I feel like, yeah, young Kostya had better technique than I do. Okay, I wrote knight f5. That's weird. So, not sure if, yeah, the notation was really there. What did I play, a4? King d7 takes. <laughs> Rook h6, resign. Nice. That's gonna be a GG. Okay, next game we have some info. I'm playing Kevin. And looks like. Looks like we won this game. Because I see the checkmate at the end. Alright, so let's flip. Kevin, because back then I just assumed. You know. People just had one name, their first name. <laughs> that's, that's how it worked. So next game, e4, e5. Knight f3, knight c6. Bishop b5, a6. Bishop a4, b5, bishop b3. Knight f6, d3, bishop e7. So yeah, I was just playing classic Rui back then. Yeah, I remember this. Bishop e3, castles. Knight d2, knight g4. Look at this, guys. Look at this. <laughs> Marco, I don't know my rating. My guess is somewhere around, like, I mean, it feels like a pretty decent level. Like, to me, this is easily, like, 13, 1400 level. I mean, I haven't really seen any anything terrible. This could be like the games of a 2000 player, honestly. I wouldn't even... Someone could show me these games, I wouldn't really... Because <laughs> the level of the opposition has, has just not been that high yet, so... It's easy to look good when, you know, the opponent is like, hanging stuff. But Queen e2 takes... Takes d6. Got the two bishops. Castles. 
bishop b7, d4, ed, take that, knight takes d4, do we take? Yeah, I was really good at, at seeing this kind of thing, right? Just spotting very simple tactics, snagging pawns, and pulling back. So f4, rook e8, rook f3, d5. Nice pawn break. But what did I want on e5? Oh, I probably want a d4. Yeah, that makes sense. So, rook goes to h3, white tries to attack, de, we're not afraid, knight f1, did I see it? Of course, of course, bishop d4, and that's going to be a gg, king h1, e3, knight takes e3, rook takes, man, chess used to be so easy, guys, no wonder I became a chess professional, this was the only thing that was like, just straightforward, easy, move by move <laughs> c3 here this one and that was game oh <laughs> could have taken there <laughs> yeah whoops missed that one i i wasn't much for the tactics guys i was just straight you know when i had the queen i was like you know easy 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 okay next game oh this one says we might have some new information coming in all american cup round six board 402 i'm playing white against someone named Kiefer, and my rating is 1060 this was played 11 19 and then it says zero zero, so that sounds like two thousand. That sounds like the year two thousand, because it's just zero zero. So e four, e five, knight f three, knight c six, d four. Yeah, I played the scotch back then. This was my main repertoire. D six. Okay, main move here is bishop b five, but I pushed d five. So even back then, you know what? I was a d four player at heart, guys. I was a d four player. <laughs> I was definitely a d4 player at heart. Bishop g4, bishop e2, knight g6. Castles. Wait. Wait, something happened. Hold on. Knight f5. Next move is knight f5 for black. But then it says bishop takes f5, e takes. Oh, knight f4, knight f4, of course. Okay, so takes, takes, queen d2, queen e7, queen takes f5, at least I'm consistent, I didn't correct it here either, queen takes f5, <laughs> c6, rook f1, probably the board was backwards or something, huh? rook d8, b3, ugh, why b3? Wow. This is the first like bad move I've seen. <laughs> Genuinely bad move. It just like it's so slow and pointless. And like, like in what universe are we hanging this pawn on, on c4? This is a position where you go e5, you go h3. I mean like <laughs> Like e5 should be the move, like immediately. Yeah, e5, just immediately. How am I how did I not play e5 here? What? Unbelievable. I mean, e5 is just so so natural. Like takes takes. You just open up the rook. It's it's just literally gg. Okay, so b3. Black played g6. Good move. <laughs> now again, e5 is best. Um, I played bishop d1. So <laughs> at least that was <laughs> I was setting it up. <laughs> Man, I can't. Did I really play b3? just to defend this like overprotect the pawn just so i could go bishop d1 just so i could <laughs> so slow so then black goes queen d7 and queen takes yep so i was i was rewarded for my patient play knight g5 okay bishop takes d1 
rook takes d1, bishop g7, queen f3. And now we're just a piece up, we're cruising. h4 here, probably good. Nah, just go back, knight h3. No worries. Queen e5, rook c1, bishop h6, rook d1. I guess I was just gonna go here if black repeated. Bishop f8, no, king f8, knight e2, or maybe I would have played this, knight e2. g5, g4, power chest. I like this move. This is nice because here I carve out some squares. Bishop g7, knight g3, bishop f6, queen e3, bishop e7, knight f5, rook g6, queen g3, yep, just going for the end game. It's almost like I'm playing a little speedrun, like this is very similar chess to my speedrun. <laughs> very similar to how things play out, I just like play casual, win a piece, and then slowly convert it. Rig G1, okay, not sure what's happening here, but it looks like the fight is taking place on the king side. Bishop E5 check. Three, black takes. Rook G2, Bishop E5. Knight E7, that's gonna be a GG. Rook E8 takes, takes, Knight takes G5. Okay, good game, Kiefer. Next game was against Edgar. Again, no info other than that. This was against Edgar. E4, C5, Knight F3. Knight C6. No, I probably played E5. <laughs> yeah, I think that's E5. Knight F3, Knight C6. Yeah, this makes more sense. Knight C3, Knight F6. Bishop C4, Knight takes E4. Yeah, get some, Edgar. Get some takes d5 that's how you do it this line has always been good for black okay castles bishop d6 d3 castles bishop d2 bishop g4 rook e1 queen f6 knight d5 queen g6 yeah everything i think pretty normal knight h4 trade queens take on g6 fg yeah not really sure we needed fg here like this is kind of nice pressure but it does isolate the pawn i think nowadays since we're we're not up a pawn but um i would just go hg and and keep it solid and i think black should be fine should be close to equal actually um i'm not sure i should have traded i think on this position queen h5 makes a lot more sense actually because if f3 then either we take and we can play for this these kinds of ideas, like maybe e4, right? Kind of annoying. Yeah, white's king side looks really weak. Um, like g3, for example, we just take it, go for the attack. And we have like minimum perpetual check if we want, but we can also consider like bringing in the knight. Could be dangerous. Not really sure, hard to say. Um, we can take this one also. It's a lot of pawns for black, but on f3, we can also just pull back. And this is actually, oh yeah, this is like not even, <laughs> this is not even uh, playable for, for white. So I don't know, what did he want on queen h5? Yeah, this, this is just game over actually. I mean, knight f3 is possible, but then knight d4, and this is a lot of pressure. Rook e3, um, maybe f5 here, maybe we just take. Maybe e4. Oh, e4. e4 is just killing. And this one. So ha would have to take here, and then this is just checkmate. It's just me. So yeah, queen h5. So kind of a miss. You guys can see a uh, pattern, right? And I remember this growing up because I, I mean, I, I know my <laughs> progression was like, I would miss these kinds of like tactical resources from time to time kind of more dynamic stuff. No. Anyway, so take, take, we go for this safe ending. Rook A takes D1. Rook A C8, man, I was really big on the overprotection. Jeez Louise. Knight C3, <laughs> Knight D4. 
Rook c1. King f7. Bold move. Okay, knight e4, and then it says rook cf8. What? <sighs> We're gonna have to pass. All right, let's make a pass, not rook d8. We'll go rook f e8, c3, knight c6. We'll try to figure it out. Bishop e3, oh, rook d7, so rook d7, okay. So probably we did go rook fd8. So instead of rook fd8, we wrote rook cf8. Okay, that's cool. That makes sense. c3, knight c6. Bishop e3, rook d7. Rook cd1, rook d8. Okay, gonna assume it's this rook. g3, bishop e7. Bishop c5, bishop f6. Rook e3, b6. I, I like what I'm doing here. This is a good good pressure. Bishop a3, knight a5, maybe going for this one, b3, I just drop back, knight c6, okay, you got me, rook f3, rook f7, shoot, rook f7, <laughs> when did we move the, oh, it wasn't king f7 all the way back then, it was rook f7. That's what happened. I thought king f7 was a weird move. We played rook f7, of course. So then knight e4. Rook cf8. I should have never have doubted myself, I'm sorry. c3, knight c6. Bishop e3, rook d7. Now it makes perfect sense. Rook d8. G3, Bishop E7. It is hard to tell between a K and an R on this score sheet. Now everything makes a lot more sense. B3, Knight C6, Rook F3, Rook F7, B4, A6, G4, A5, okay. <laughs> G5, bishop e7, takes, takes, f3, ab, and now we're collecting, knight takes b4, takes, takes, okay, pawn up, knight f2, rook a8, rook b1, bishop c5, I really hope we won this game. Bishop d4, rook c2, c5, king f1. Everything looks great. I mean, I think it it would make sense to just lop this one off, just simplify. Because this rook endgame feels really pleasant. With um, with the extra pawn and kind of better structure. Actually, king e6, just going after some of these pawns here. Even this, king f5, h4, rook a4, for example. And white's pawns are just super, super weak. This, I think, would be give good good winning chances. But let's see what let's see what we got instead. Oh, I did take. Oh, how about that? Rook takes. King e6. Rook b2. Let's hopefully we just defend this one. Rook a6. Nice job. King e2. King. King f5. H4. King f4. King f2. H6. Gh gh. Yeah, there's no result on this game, so the moves just end here. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if we won this one, or we drew, or we lost somehow, but that's the end of the game. I mean, it looks pretty good for black. Hopefully we won it. But uh, I don't really know.
So who knows? It does look like a winning position for black. It looks really nice. We got like h5, g5. Pretty active. Even here, next move. Because it's going to be hard for white to um, hold on to everything. Yeah. Anyway, let's download this one. Okay, guys. Next game, I kid you not. I'm playing black. And my opponent, I swear to God, this is what it says. It says Adam Shankland. I didn't even know there was another Shankland. But it says Adam Shankland. Guys can kind of read that anyway <laughs> i didn't know sam had a brother uh or i don't know if they're related at all but anyway <laughs> we're playing adam here f4 ef knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 d4 uh-oh looks like adam got me Bishop b6, why didn't he take here? Oh man. Oh man, white's position was good. See guys, this was my weakness back then. King's Gambit. This was my weakness. Oh man. This looks rough already. This is really bad. This is just like... <laughs> terrible position. Man. Yeah, I don't think this was the best move in the opening. Bishop c5. <laughs> Allowing d4. I mean, g5, I guess, is what I would play nowadays. But, yeah. Anyway. So, I, I imagine we're, we're losing this one. I mean, this looks like a really tough game. A uh, tough position already. King h8. Rook a1 f6 bishop e3 we just have no space d6 d5 95 takes takes taking with the piece i think that's i think that's correct bishop b5 queen g6 now i actually think we're we're feeling a lot better here so adam adam pushed d5 i think way too early because he basically just gives away this hugely important square so I think something else should have been played here. Maybe even h3 or king h1. Yeah, basically anything else. Now I think black is, is okay. Bishop takes b6, a, b. Rook e3, queen h6. Rook d1, rook d8. What? Rook d8? What did I grab my rook to play rook e8 and then I saw that it's hanging to the bishop and I was like, uh oh, let's play rook d8 instead. Rook d8 makes no sense. <laughs> I should just go knight g4, bishop g4. So many good active moves in the position. <laughs> rook d8. Okay, rook d8. a4, knight g4. Rook h3, queen takes d2, rook takes d2. Knight e5, rook h4. Yeah, black is completely fine in this endgame, maybe even slightly pushing. I go bishop d7. I guess I felt like I had no choice but to trade these guys off. Takes, takes, rook f2. Now I go knight e5 immediately. I feel like knight could also go to c5. I feel like rook f8, this is the more flexible move here. I should first double rooks, and then maybe knight c5, or maybe knight e5, kind of depends. But okay, knight e5. I am kind of hitting this one. So rook f5, rook d7, b3, rook f8. Okay, again with the overprotection. <laughs> rook h5. G6. Come on, play g6. That's the move. We go h6. H6 not as good. Oops. Rook f5. King h7, knight e2. Rook g8. Knight f4. G5. There we go. Whoops. Whoops. Get some, Adam. Get some. <laughs> Rook g4 takes. Get some. Knight h5. 
King G6, Knight G3, Rook E7, H3, Knight E5, King F2, Knight D7, King E3, Rook E8, C4, Knight C5. Now it's just GG. G, G. And that was game over. <laughs> Next game, we're playing Ethan. Let's check it out. E4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, D4, takes, takes. Knight takes D4. That doesn't look good. Queen takes D4, Knight F6. All right, we got an open Sicilian here. Haven't seen too many of these from me so far. Bishop C4, B6, castles. And then it says bishop c5. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I always make this mistake. It was e4, e5. Knight f3, knight c6, d4. Takes, 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 takes. Knight f6. I played bishop c4. I think e5 should be played, actually, just immediately. Because if queen e7, you can just go bishop e2 and... You block the pin, you cover all the squares, and knight is going to have to go backwards. Or if knight h5, then just bishop e2 anyway, and the knight is, like, very awkward. Or g4 actually just wins the knight on the spot. Because um, bishop e2, g6, at least black can defend. So, yeah. But bishop c4, okay, fair enough. b6. Castles, bishop c5. Queen d3, castles. Knight c3, d6, bishop g5. Yeah, I really love this plan. I always loved the old bishop g5, knight d5. This is just always winning. Let's see if I get it. h6, bishop h4, queen e7. Wait, what? I didn't go knight d5 here? It says bishop takes f6. No, probably I play knight d5. I just forgot to write it in the score sheet. <laughs> It says bishop takes f6 gf. <laughs> Probably this happened, queen d8, and then I took. Rook fd1. What? Oh, queen g4 is black's next move. Oh, okay, so knight d5, I'm guessing queen e6? No, no, no way. I would have taken on f6. Uh, you know what I think happened? Okay, I wrote down queen e7, but I think my opponent played queen d7. Because then I took, and then my next move is rook fd1, which makes no sense either. Should be rook ad1. This rook is not doing anything, whereas the f rook can be used on the f file and the e file. Okay, but then queen g4, rook d2, queen g5, queen f3. takes on d2, e5, rook b8, no this was a blunder, <gasps> e takes f6, <laughs> oh get some Ethan, get some, <laughs> oh man, got him, and that was a gg, <laughs> KO, KO, yeah. Oh man, poor kid. No, this must have been a blunder. There's no way I was like trying to sack this. This must have been I hung my rook. <laughs> I mean, any good move here, queen g5, yeah, that's gg in the other way. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, beautiful game, well-deserved.